Upheaval, Reckoning, Chapter 50, Mirror to the Sky Sky Mirror Lake For twilight the name seemed too simple for what had happened and will happen here. The air was heavy with tension and the silence blanketed them like thick fog. It was as if everything was holding its breath, waiting for the confrontation about to occur. As befitting its name, the waters of Sky Mirror Lake displayed a sheen that was clearly magical in nature. Remarkably, the water had not frozen solid. Even from a long distance, the gentle rippling across its surface was visible. The sky above them was still covered with dark grey clouds, with early morning light struggling to shine through. The water showed that scene with equal clarity, as if there were two skies in that spot. Even with the rippling, the image was perfect. Individual clouds moved across the surface as they did the sky. A few weeks ago, this would have been a breathtaking, smile-inducing sight. Knowledge of the old kingdom put a dark twist in Sky Mirror Lake's beauty. For the water to have such mirror-like sheen, it had to reflect light very well, which meant that very little reached beneath its surface. Just how dark were the depths of Sky Mirror Lake? Twilight tried to imagine the place, a lightless, watery grave for the old kingdom. She doubted that even fish would reside in the crumbling ruins, if there were even fish in Sky Mirror Lake to begin with. Whatever lived in the water had to adapt to near-total darkness, that and the power of Oceanus being so close. She certainly didn't want to meet those things. Behind Twilight, Applejack, Rarity and Rainbow Dash had gathered around Fluttershy, still trying to convince her that they could find another way to draw out Gravitas and his allies. The royalty and Black Rose stood just a short distance away, eyeing the structure around the lake. A few minutes ago, Fluttershy had explained her Eye of Fear. It was difficult to hear in more ways than one. First, that kind-hearted, sensitive Fluttershy held the power of a Windigo was nearly impossible to believe. Second, when she saw that her audience included her worried friends and a trio of very serious-looking royalty, Fluttershy's brave suggestion crumbled into a stammering explanation. Half embarrassed for having such an audience and half ashamed of having to tell them about the nature of her stare, she squeaked and mumbled until it looked like Prince Torado was about to explode. It wasn't Prince Torado's scowling impatience that made Twilight worry, however. It was the knowing smile of his former student. Black Rose listened to the whole explanation as if she had suspected it all along. She was supportive of the slowly forming plan, which made her even more suspicious. What was it going to take to put this mare out of balance? To make something happen that she didn't have as a part of her plan? Black Rose was just a few feet away from Princess Celestia. This was a vertebral shipwreck within sight of land. There was an upside. Black Rose did seem a bit tired. She spoke confidently and moved with the same grace as she always did, but the smaller details were more obvious. Her speech was slower and her eyes heavier. There was also something wrong with the aura of magic around her. It was much more powerful as was expected, but it was also clearly less stable. Twilight wanted to attack. There was weakness here, a vulnerability she had not noticed before. Black Rose's defenses were not perfect and her thorns were back in Canterlot. She glanced at the royalty. They must have noticed too. There was no way they couldn't. Perhaps Princess Celestia was so focused on General Gravitas that she couldn't be bothered to gorge the enemy before her. Perhaps Prince Terado was too involved with his former student to take advantage of the situation. As for Princess Luna, there was something odd going on with her too. While her sibling looked towards the structure that Gravitas had built around Sky Mirror Lake, Princess Luna was staring intently at its waters, as if seeing something that no pony else could. Twilight shook her head and focused on Black Rose again. Did she dare? What if this was a chance? If she tried, would her friends quickly guess the situation and jump in? Would the royalty help her? She let a front hoof drag against the ground in anticipation and worry. At the sound of the snow scrunching its emotion, she swiftly regretted that move. Black Rose suddenly looked towards Twilight as if she had felt the stare on her. 
To Twilight's dismay, that annoying, confident smile widened just a little bit more. The message was perfectly clear. Come and try. The chance, that ghost of a chance, quietly slipped away. Twilight would have to wait until Gravitas was dealt with. Is every pony ready? Torado asked. He addressed the question to all of them, but his eyes were on Fluttershy. Yes, Fluttershy replied. The rest looked like they weren't ready, but they nodded anyway. Twilight had her own misgivings about the plan, but she didn't quite share in the fears of the rest of her friends. She had seen Fluttershy digging into that book back in the hidden archives. She was the one who had to pull Fluttershy away from a book about the terrible things done in the Old Kingdom. It only seemed wrong to expose some pony as gentle and kind as Fluttershy to danger, but the greater wrong would be to try and hide her away while every pony else fought. Twilight looked to her side and towards Pinkie Pie, the only other pony who was enthusiastic about the archives. You're not going to talk Fluttershy out of this plan? she asked. Pinkie shook her head vigorously. No, she said. It's tough not being able to help as much as you want to. She looked wistfully at Fluttershy. I'm not taking this away from her. I just hope I get a turn later. Oddly enough, Twilight felt like smiling despite Pinkie Pie wishing that she'd be thrust into danger too. Well, it looks like there ain't any way we can talk you out of this, Applejack said. She clasped Fluttershy's front hoofs with hers. Just promise me you'll stay safe, Fluttershy. Applejack, I can't, Fluttershy said. Not without lying. The others moved back and let Fluttershy stand between the royalty. Don't sound like you're making farewells, Torado told the Fluttershy. You're off to accomplish a mission, not off to the gallows. Y yes, your highness, Fluttershy said. She trotted over to stand between him and Celestia. I'm ready to start. The stern look turned to approval as Torado spread his wings. All right, there's no way Gravitas is not yet aware that we are nearby. He's likely pissed that none of the Elecons he sent out took out their respective targets. Fluttershy, do you need to actually stare at some pony to use this eye of fear of yours? I, I'm not sure. Fluttershy looked away when the frown returned to Torado's face. I don't think so. I think I can just use it from afar and he'll notice. You think? Torado asked. W well, I've never tried it before. Torado's frown deepened. Are you sure you can even use it on command? He asked. The glower from the prince slowly eroded Fluttershy's carefully built up courage. No, but I really think I can, even if I hadn't before and... Big brother, let's just give her a chance, Luna said. No pony knows much about Lacorus's abilities. She's doing all of these things by instinct. It sounds like a wonderful little gamble, Black Rose said. Damn it, Black Rose, Torado growled. All right, we'll fly a little closer, then see what Fluttershy can do. Luna, stay with the other elements of harmony and make sure they can join in as needed. All of them nodded again. Torado, Celestia and Black Rose flew off with Fluttershy. The cold clung to Fluttershy's feathers as she took to the air. Her wings felt stiff and each flap felt like the wind was trying to push her away. None of the alicorns were experiencing the same trouble. She knew why, too. There was no powerful wind blowing her back or oppressive cold weighing her down. Fear of general gravitas blew her back and doubt in what she could actually accomplish weighed her down. She would have been happier flying through an actual blizzard than dealing with these feelings, but she flew gamely on. This should be far enough, Prince Terado said. The four of them hovered in front of the fortress. They were still around half a mile away. It was only now did Fluttershy realize that she was going to rely on Prince Terado the most for protection. She didn't trust Black Rose while Princess Celestia was still not at full strength. The prince was intimidating, unfriendly and outright rude, but having him in front of her was reassuring. When you're ready, Fluttershy, Princess Celestia said. As for Black Rose, Fluttershy didn't even want to look at her. The mare had a smile full of traps. If she caught a glance of that now, she would never be able to do anything. Instead, she closed her eyes. Whether she called it the stare or eye of fear, she needed it now. Please, she pleaded. 
she remembered the other Fluttershy chained away in some dark hole underneath her cottage. It could just be a dream, but she was willing to grasp at anything at this point. I need you now. You can't break these chains, not anymore. What did that other Fluttershy mean? The, the more Fluttershy, Fluttershy thought about, about those words, words the, the less, less time seemed to dream. She focused on that image of herself, locked away, chained more tightly than an anchored airship. Break these chains, she thought. She was drawn to the idea. The image of her looked up and she wasn't sure if she was still imagining things and willing the image to look up or if she was actually staring at that place again. The look in the other self's eyes told everything. There was no going back on this. She willed those chains to break. Prince Torado asked her if she couldn't use it on command. She knew she could if she just accomplished something within her. This was it. Instinct was all she had to guide her, but she knew that doing this would accomplish something. The links began to shake. Not anymore. The warning resounded in her head again. Anymore meant that she had done so before. Whenever she had needed it, she had used this ability. When the need passed, she locked it away. Had she done no better than what Princess Celestia had been doing? Desperately ignoring a necessary part of her life? That had to end here, just as the barrier had to end. That other Fluttershy, whether it was Loch Horus, some side of her, or something else, should not be chained and locked away. She tried to imagine herself tugging at them as hard as she could. Her hoofs didn't actually touch them, but she could see them strain. A loud clinking noise, like a metal link snapping, brought Fluttershy out of that image. She opened her eyes so quickly that the eloquence around her, all of whom were staring at her now, looked surprised. Fluttershy? Princess Celestia asked. Are you all right? I I'm fine, Fluttershy said weakly. She didn't feel anything different. Her eyes weren't tingly or anything, not that they ever were whenever the stare came on by itself. She couldn't even look at Prince Terado now, let alone even suggest to him that she was having no luck with trying to bring out the Eye of Fear. Why did they even have to lure Gravitas out? He came to this world to kill all ponies, only to hold up by a lake as if he was a victim. She pressed her lips tightly together. The only thing worse than a murderer was a cowardly murderer. She imagined a big, heavily muscled alicorn, easily four or five times her size, cowering in a corner or hiding under a desk because the minions he sent all failed and he was the one now being attacked. This is supposed to be the Eternal Herd's general? A cornered rat would have more dignity. Fluttershy! Princess Celestia's voice brought Fluttershy up short. An apology already at her lips, even though she had no idea what she had done wrong. What had happened? And how long had she been just hovering there, just staring? The princess didn't look upset. You've done well, Fluttershy, Princess Celestia said. Well and enough. Are you all right? That was enlightening, Black Rose said. This little gamble has certainly paid off. We're going to discuss this some other time. Tirado said. He turned his gaze back to the structure by the lake. Fluttershy could only blink. Well, and enough? But she hadn't even done anything. What happened and... A distant boom like a massive and powerful thunderstrike jerked Fluttershy's attention back to the walled structure. That was followed by the heavy crunch of armor plates crashing to each other. Instead of the distant fortress, she stared at what appeared to be an ornate pillar as wide as a tree trunk and nearly ten feet long. Strange markings were all over the white stone. The weapon strained violently as if it was trying to get to her. The bladed point of a spear doing the exact same thing to her right, the weapon barely touching the tip of her ear. Something warm trickled down the back of Fluttershy's ear, slowly making its way to her neck, then down her shoulder. Her heart jumped from steady to frantic in an instant at the scene unfolding inches away from her. To her front, Prince Torado had slammed into an enormous alicorn, one even bigger than he was. His hoofs pushed back an enormous shaft of white stone so dangerously close to pounding her skull into paste. 
To her right, both Princess Celestia and Black Rose had blocked the thrusting spear of a golden-armored alicorn, this one hardly any bigger than Princess Luna. A second boom erupted from behind them. Fluttershy gasped. Her friends were towards that direction. She didn't dare look away from the deadlock in front of her. With an angry grunt, Prince Torado shoved the bigger alicorn back. The smaller one retreated and hovered next to its companion. Not even a word of greeting, General Gravitas, Torado told the big one. Royalty doesn't get you anywhere these days, it seems. General Gravitas wasn't looking at Prince Torado when he replied. First, he turned towards the smaller alicorn. Fulman, join Rillentum and send the Princess Luna. Kill the mortals with her. I will deal with these ones. Fulman nodded, then winked his way towards where Princess Luna and the others were. Once he was alone, Gravitas turned his gaze towards Princess Celestia. It was a sad time for the herd when the fall of Lexarius was discovered. Sadder will it be when it becomes known that Princess Celestia has fallen further still. His deep voice went from a solemn monotone to an angry snarl. How dare you show yourself to me while consorting with a vessel of the firstborn's power? You wretched little filly, forever shall his majesty be ashamed for fathering two wicked children. Open your eyes for once, brute, Celestia retorted. She gestured to Fluttershy with a foreleg. This vessel is called Fluttershy, and she also happens to be the bearer of the element of kindness. She is proof of what the mortals truly are, potential for both good and evil bound together by a will free to choose. Destroying them would be a mistake even a foal should be ashamed of making. Gravitas did stare at Fluttershy intently. His ice blue eyes narrowed. It is true, the element of kindness does reside in this one, he said. He sounded calmer now, but his voice remained stony. My duty is clear. The elements of harmony must be freed from their prisons and returned to the herd. Celestia's eyes widened for a second before narrowing into slits. By my father upon the throne, Gravitas, if you sought any less, you would drain the minds of those around you. Gravitas answered with a frontal charge, his weapon sweeping at them in a wide arc. Prince Torado flew ahead to intercept the blow while Princess Celestia held Fluttershy in a telekinetic grip and flew out of the way. Black Rose had already circled behind Gravitas, her horn surrounded by both golden and black magical energy. Celestia! Prince Torado called out as he struggled against the enormous weapon. Get her back to the rest of the elements and help Luna with those too. Rose and I will take this one down. Princess Celestia didn't reply, but she was already swooping towards where Princess Luna and the others were. Her telekinetic grip disappeared as soon as Fluttershy began to flap her own wings. Below them, clouds of dust partly obscured the violence still playing out. A loud bang of metal hitting stone was followed by an odd Ooh-hoo-hoo! as if some pony had struck his head inside a metal barrel and was laughing and echoing inside it. Celestia landed just in time as Fulman arrived and Riddentum moved to stand next to him. Princess Luna was panting and sweating, her eyes focused entirely on her enemy even as Celestia went to stand next to her. Twilight Sparkle's horn was glowing while Applejack, Rarity and Rainbow Dash had their weapons drawn. Even Pinkie Pie was holding onto that piece of slate she was constantly carrying. All of them were covered with dust and snow and sported a few small cuts on their faces and legs. Not even one enemy casualty, Fulman remarked. Fluttershy shuddered at the calm tone. He spoke as if he was a parent coming home to find the chores not yet done. I had expected you to perform better than Caro and Coleman, Riddentum. Apologies, Riddentum said with a chuckle. They actually know how to assist each other and the tiny princess is surprisingly capable. No excuses. The broad-bladed spear whirled around Fulman, golden arcs of electricity running up and down its length. I had expected Gravitas to find no more use for a set than a spot to hang a champion, Celestia said. But I refuse to believe that all his troops are the same. Tell me honestly, Fulman Lancia, will you kill these ponies solely because some pony told you to? Fluttershy glanced towards Celestia. She could understand at least trying to reason with these two, but it didn't take much to understand that they were not going to back away. Riddentum bounced on his hoofs, displaying a great deal of agility for some ponies so huge and bedecked in armor. 
Thick brass-colored plates covered most of him, and he bore something that looked both like a champion and a mask. The eye holes were upturned, and the mouthpiece was curved, so he looked as if he had a permanent, disturbingly jolly smile on his face. Like his companion, Fullman was so covered in bronze-colored barding that it was impossible to see his face. Unlike Riddentum, his champion didn't seem to have any eye holes or a mouthpiece. It looked as if his head was encased in a single piece of bronze plating, shaped to resemble a scowling pony head. His bright red mane, like a lighter-colored version of Torado's deep red flames, blazed from the top of his helmet and down the back of his neck. Fullman was small enough to stand completely under Riddentum's shadow, but he was a pony in front and, despite Riddentum's barely contained excitement, there was an unyielding stance to the way Fullman stood that made it clear that these two would have to be destroyed to stop them. Riddentum raised his massive hammer slowly, whirling it above his head. Fullman raised a hoof to block him when he took a step forward. You wish to hear my thoughts on this matter? Fullman asked. I'm surprised. I had heard that Princess Celestia listened only to what she wanted to hear. Princess Celestia's horn glowed and a blade of golden light began to materialize in front of her. That was true, she said. Then let me make my stand in this clear. Fullman pointed the tip of his spear at Fluttershy. She braced herself, fearing that those bolts of electricity might shoot out towards her. No lightning bolt came. The mortals are and have always been only one thing, a problem. One that has been indulged rather than dealt with, as any problem should be. This is not even unique in that regard. Before his cycle, your father called for the closing of the void rifts when they first appeared, but some of the elders insisted on studying them. The problem grew as a result, but his gallantry ultimately saved us all. You are young, princess, which is why you speak and make stands as if these events are new and are unique even in reality. The same old truth is playing itself out yet again. And what truth is that? Celestia asked. The sunlight blade she had been holding low now levitated in front of her face. The politicians make the mess, the soldiers clean. Fullman lowered his hoof and stepped forward. Redentum? He barked. Are we done talking? Rillentum asked. His hammer whirled even faster to match the growing excitement in his voice. Yes, let's solve this problem. The hammer stopped whirling and the spear lowered to aim for a heart as both elecons charged. And now for my thoughts on the matter. Okay, uh, so the plan to gr draw Gravitas out did work. Fluttershy kinda released the power of uh, that name, Lock Horus. I'm sorry, I don't just know how to pronounce it correctly. Um, and she used the stare. And she didn't even know she did it. So did that other Fluttershy take over there for a moment? Maybe. I at least think so, because Fluttershy is asking herself how long she has been hovering there. And then we have, well, Fluttershy almost getting killed if... Black Rose, Princess Celestia, and Torado hadn't fought off the two attacking alicorns. I'm really looking forward to see how that fight with Black Rose, Torado, and Gravitas is going to work out. But what really shows me is that he still can't really think of her as an enemy here is that Torado doesn't call her Black Rose or Black, he just calls her Rose. Like, um, I don't know, like uh, twi Twilight's friends calling her Twi or something. He doesn't call her Black. He just calls her Rose. I think there is. Um, he still can't. He st he still can't see her as an enemy. He has still remembers the good old times, which is also uh, can also be seen in the chapter where they um, meet one on one in the. I think it was the Heavenly Basin. Very interesting. Very interesting. But here at the end, I'm pretty interested in how to see Luna, how Luna will fight. Because, um, we saw earlier in the story how she tried to stop Sable Steel with illusions and she 
said to Pinkie Pie in another chapter that illusions are part of her domain and yeah, I'm also looking forward to see what Pinkie Pie can do with her slate. I mean, that True Earth Pony has, I, sorry, I just can't remember his name right now, uh, has been teaching her a few things. So I'm really looking forward to see what kind of tricks she has learned. I mean, that quote-unquote teleportation she used against Sable Steel, I don't know if that would be useful against an alicorn that is, I don't know how big. Okay, sincerely yours with your pony, and I'm as always looking forward to your opinion.